Hello and welcome to my walkthrough of challenge mode raids without a twisted bow. This is a very specific guide, uh, really only applicable to Iron Man who can't seem to get a bow but do want to solo some challenge mode. So normally we'd start off going through the gear, but you can see what I'm wearing throughout the uh, throughout the run and it's not ideal. It's just something I like to go with and allows me to do consistent raids. Uh, I use a scythe on Tecton. Uh, definitely don't forget to venge it. It's uh, it uh, speeds up the the fight by quite a bit. But scythe is not the best weapon to use consistently. It has the best potential, but that happens very rarely. I just like it. I like the method, and you can still get consistent two to four minute Tectons with a scythe, as long as you reset when you don't hit your Dragon Warhammer. Otherwise, just bring an Elder Maul. It's technically better in the long run. Uh, here, you can see me make a mistake on the second uh, rotation. And I should have stepped back there instead of just continuing around. So I'll speed it up, trying to fix the mistake I made. If you want to learn this method, the next rotation, I do it correctly. Uh, just trying to get some vengeance in. And we're going to speed the rest up as well. You know how this works. This uh, guide is not for beginners, so I'm not going to explain the basic COX solo mechanics. This uh, method is one click every tick, except that right here you wait one tick when you step away. And on the other side you will do the same thing, and other than that it's just one click per tick, and every fifth tick you attack, of course. There you go, step away again. One thing you can do is vengeance when uh, he does his last hit which makes it easy to continue the rotation but I choose not to here so I walk away or walk next to him making a uh, making it perfectly safe and uh, I don't need any more vengeance I don't have the food to do it anyway but if you do want a vengeance that's a good spot to do it in otherwise you would kind of mess up the rotation of course very possible but I find myself ruining it so, generally vengeance on the last hit. So I, I drink my anti-poison, I've eaten my food, so I can, that's two food plus one anti-poison gone, so I can pick up three uh, of the potions. Then I do crabs, the method is kind of difficult to explain, so you just want to see what I do. All of these clicks matter, the order in which I do these things matters. So you mage first, you mage the second, you hammer the first, you lure the second, hammer the second, Mage the third, or mage the third before you hammer the second, then you hammer. Yeah, you can see how uh, annoying it is to explain, but this method allows you to get the magic crystal as uh, in the quickest way possible. I sped up the rest of the crabs because they're it's pretty simple, except you know, dropping a, a stamina potion or something else to wear your blowpipe, picking up the stamina potion again, um, requires a little practice to get used to, but it's pretty simple. If not, you can just drop it and pick it up after all of the, uh, well, after the rune is completed. So for scavs, I drink a stamina potion. I ha you bring three without a bow, so you should have more than enough. And drop seven items, if I recall correctly. Uh, just the seven items you're willing to lose if you happen to disconnect. And uh, kill the scavs with a sang staff. If you are a beginner, I would suggest bringing some brew so you don't need to do this with a sang staff. But given that I generally don't take any damage un like until vanguards, I can just heal up above overload HP. Now, right now, I've healed up to like 50, uh, 48 or 49 or something, and I allow my rapid heal prayer to heal me to above 50 so I can overload. Sometimes after a tecton you can overload immediately, but I did not have the HP to do that. So, uh, yeah, I had to get my HP a little higher with Sang. Then, uh, this, this is pretty simple. You do two full inventories. You don't need to have them entirely full. As you can see right here, I, I'm missing two, but that's fine. The next one as well, so I'm missing a total of four logs, but it finishes anyway. I turn on my walk here because you have enough time and save some run energy. Withdraw all, put back the axe, the claws, yeah, your uh, your dragon hunter lance and everything. You just want to keep your your gear 
your general gear plus Dragon Hunter Crossbow, Scythe, and your um, Rapier. Those three items you want to keep. You pick up all your stuff. Overload, if you're not overloaded yet. Uh, Redemption, of course. And put, put back in the chest out of all the stuff you picked up. Yourself, two stamina potions, and your two stacks. By the way, it's nice to drop those two stacks that you just got from scavs on your pile so that you can immediately take your axe and tinderbox without banking. You could just drop nine items instead of seven before scavs, but um, yeah, I don't want to lose those items if I DC. So then to the ice demon method, not a lot to be said here except practice. This method isn't too easy to learn. It requires some timings that are that might feel unnatural at first, uh, but this is definitely better than blowpiping, especially if you don't hit two specs. If you hit two specs, blowpipe is slightly better, but still. It saves scales, so it's worth learning this. You can even add in a little walk here, as you can see. Every third hit I do a walk. Maybe you can add in a walk on another hit as well, I'm not sure, but you can just run this as well. You have enough stamina to just only run. You don't need to do that little walk. And uh, I sped it up. It's the same thing over and over again. I think one spec landed, so it's relatively quickly. And now that's done. Um, this Shaman that I'm going to do next is not good. No, it's actually really bad. Because I wanted to get the furthest one for the video because that's the best one to lure generally. Except here I would never have tried it because I saw how close the other one was. But just wanted to show like this is the one you generally want to lure. The one with the lighter skin color. Um, the, yeah, or the, the more faded one. Yeah, you can see the one is more faded. Generally he he spots you less uh, less less quickly, so you don't want to go for him. But in this case, I should have gone for him. As you can see, he saw me, and so given that I lured the other one as well, and I have both on me. So, uh, yeah, just going to have to deal with it. Circling around them is a pretty reliable strategy, unless when they jump in the wrong moments. Uh, circling is kind of difficult, but it seems to work out here. I just crossed the lag line here that I'm going through right now. You should mark it. I did, but um, Runelight has Amnesia and uh, unmarked it again. But the lag line in the east is pretty horrible and will kill you, literally. And there's nothing you can do about it. If you're blowpipe running the Shaman and you hit the lag line, he can kill you and you cannot run away from his, uh, from his poison attack. So I would suggest marking it and staying away. I ran through it because uh, I wasn't thinking about it, but yeah, it's pretty unsafe to do so. Stay away from that eastern side. Now, once you do run through it, of course, it loaded the next room, and uh, you can you can run there safely, but just avoid it if you can. And that's pretty much the end of that room. Sped it up. Here I get hit. I made a little mistake there. Went for the DPS instead of safety. Not a smart move. Try to try not to do that, especially if you don't bring a brew. You should bring a brew if you're learning this, because it's too much of a hassle to always die here and run back. So just be safe with it and drink a brew until you're very comfortable. Then I equip all of my melee gear, including my scythe. Don't wear your rapier, but your scythe, unless you, of course, you don't bring a scythe. You can just wear your rapier and uh, get all of the tools. Drop the rake. Plant the boot you. Drop the Buchu and the Sea Tipper, dump your inventory, take out your stacks and your spade, get the vials, fill them up, and do your prep. Pretty simple. You can clean your herbs. As you can see, I do this here. You can clean them while you're picking them. Not too important. Uh, the amount of vials I put in my chest are important because it allows me to bank pretty quickly. I put 10 vials back in, and so I've got... Enough files for 18 brews and, and 7 restores. I, I drop my uh, mushrooms and my spade and I take out those 10 files exactly. So that's quick movement, quick banking. Here, this is just something you're going to have to practice. I bank everything pretty quickly. Um, you can right click stuff to pick it out faster because the chest kind of works weird that way. You can't just spam click every item. It won't all go into your inventory. So you have to right click stuff. I bring my claws, my vengeance, 
one overload, one enhance, one restore, and then four brews. I overload before I enter the hole, and I vengeance as well. Then I can drink one full brew and a restore dose, and that's just enough time to get back to full stats to start. You can start off best off by scything, that's why we got into our scything gear immediately after shamans. Uh, you can do like four hits, but the fourth one won't register. If there's no if the there's no melee, or sorry, the ranger doesn't pop up at the first time, you just do one scythe and then switch quickly to whatever you're supposed to hit it with. Um, there's not much to say about Vanguard, it's pretty much the same method as a twisted bow. However, those with twisted bow can bow the others from afar. Here you kinda want it go ideally. For the, the melee, you want to mage him from afar. Sometimes you're going to have to either just wait it out, or you want to tank both the ranger and the major at the same time. Not the easiest thing to do, but it's uh, it's possible if you attack him at the same at the correct tick and uh, flick prayers. Kind of risky though. The tile markers are kind of important, especially the one in the north. East and this one that I'm standing on right now. The one in the northeast is a safe spot for the Melior if the Melior is north. Um, and the other ones are just safe uh, away from the rest. And also, you can get drag. You can drag yourself under the Ranger with a uh, long range, with a long range staff. That's really nice when you're uh, attacking the Ranger, and you can just quickly switch into your magic gear click on the melier and you will no matter what side he's on you will drag yourself the only place where that doesn't happen is the one i'm standing in right now that you have to manually click under the ranger so uh, these kind of things help you slightly speed up a uh, somewhat slow room uh, without a twisted bow the room is kind of slow but with a scythe uh, it helps a lot Um, then the when it comes to potions and stuff, you want to just pick up one overload. You already have one overload, and that one you're going to be dropping later on in the thieving room. You'll see me do that. Uh, the reason is because overloading takes a time and you uh, takes a bit of time, and you can't bank while you're overloading. Right, the 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 splats, the hit splats on your character will stop you from banking. So we, you will see why I drop my overload in a bit. Also, while you're killing the, ven uh, the remaining vanguards, you can pick up your potions that they dropped. It's better, because we made enough brews, it's better to take some damage standing under a, a vanguard that is, tra that is uh, transferring. It does some damage, but it's uh, better to quickly pick up your stuff, save some time. We have enough brews to outheal that anyway. Then heal to around 50 HP if you can. Uh, run while switching into your magic gear, unequip your boots, drop your uh, overload that you see lying on the ground there, get in your bank, dump everything, pick your, take out your lockpick, and you can choose not to go for the bats, it's a bit faster, I do so because I value the extra HP over the time I lose. I'm not sure which is best in the long run. But uh, yeah, I like using the bats uh, during Vespula and also to heal my HP back up to 90-something before entering Vespula. So you can see how I dumped all of my bats. I dropped 8 items, which was 5 bats and 3 uh, grubs. Then I picked those all back up while overloading. So now that I've overloaded, I can immediately bank. And I drag my bats in the corner. Important to do that so your inventory doesn't get messed up. Take out everything, still messes up kind of, all of those brews are unneeded, so we take out a stamina potion, a um, armor helm, overload, enhance, which is a safety, we don't actually drink the enhance, just for uh, if we happen to have a very long vest, we can start, we can use the enhance and then start using that, but generally we're just going to use our restores. Uh, don't forget your stamina for sure, don't forget your vengeance, not the most important thing, but we're going to be venging bef uh, right after Vespula, so we uh, can do three vengeances on the rangers at rope. Pray melee here, your quick rares should be set to redemption augury, long range on your staff, and then from that point on it's just regular Vespula. With the difference that I'm, I have bats, so I'll be eating those bats in combination with a after I, after I redemption with a restore. So right here, you, I think right now I'm gonna get I get a restore. 
off and so I eat as well. You have to wait a tick or two ticks after you eat a bat because you won't your attack will be delayed. Otherwise you'll just run under Vesp and don't do any damage, taking uh, damage yourself for no reason. Vespula generally can be done in about four or five restores. Especially if you take as much advantage of every potential hit as you can. You don't spend too much time away from Vesp, you just keep running under. These are kind of clicks you have to get used to. They're not too hard. You can do this with enhance, but I would highly suggest not to, especially because it's slower with enhance, unless you're really good and you know exactly when the uh, prayer ticks up. But if not, enhance is really slow, and who knows, you might you might ruin the entire raid, because if you mess up Vespula, the raid's quasi over. And same thing if you die, so don't don't mess up. By the way, that little um, tile I marked in yellow, that's just the tile you can long range drag yourself into. So it's kind of a nice starting position to run towards and immediately shoot the portal. So as Vespula is dying, I switched into my melee gear and pick up all the stuff, heal up all the way to full or quasi full. Um, make sure I have a rape. I bring out my rapier from the from the bank along with my uh, my defender. You don't have to do this if you're not wearing your scythe, but I I, I use a scythe on vanguards. So if you use rapier, you should already have these in your inventory. I put my gear so that I can quickly flick bandos, and in this case, it tanks really well. Normally, it can still fail like half the time. And you can get hit pretty hard, 36s or something like that, so you might have to tick heat. It's, uh, it's also why I put my bruise on the left bottom side, as to get, without ruining my gear setup, uh, be able to get as quickly as possible towards my bruise, so I can tick heat if needed. In this case, I didn't need it. Um, you can also flick only the Bandos chestplate if you are not particularly good at it. And um, I don't kill the majors, but they're pretty good points. So if you're willing to go a bit slower, just kill the majors. It's also a bit safer. You take less damage, but I like to just tank them. Cross the rope after going up to full HP. Pray augury and pray magic, and then just cross. Uh, when it comes to healing, if you do the same thing, I prefer to run to the crystal first, as you can see. I don't heal immediately. Click the crystal, run back to the rope, click the rope, and as I run back to the rope, I clicked my brew once. It's uh, pretty quick, but it helps because the majors would otherwise do an extra attack if I immediately drank a brew. So that last attack they did, if you drink a brew right as you exit the rope towards the crystal, you will take an extra attack from them. So that's why. Uh, banking. I quickly bank all of my gear and take out, I also bank restores except for two if needed, or I take out an extra restore if I used a lot. I take out my axe, my pickaxe, myself, and my claws. And other than that, everything should be, if you did the same thing as I did, should be already in your inventory, including your stamina potion and your buff, your overload buff and your enhanced buff. Um, all of the mage gear is banked. I'm not going to use the Sang Staff at Mutadal. I use Blowpipe. It's, uh, I prefer to bring an extra brood just to be safe. You can use the Sang Staff as well. If you choose to do that, just bring one. Just bring the Sang Staff and bank the rest of your mage gear. And um, other than that, you also don't bring a Dragon Warhammer, not needed. You also don't bring your Dragon Hunter Crossbow. You can, but again, I prefer the Brew just to be safe. Dragon Hunter Crossbow is only used at Vasa, and I find that Vasa is actually incredibly consistent. One of the most dreaded bosses for No Tebow. I find it to be one of the easier bosses, except for that annoying lag line, just like with Shamans. Um, but it's consistent with, uh, aside from that horrible deal you have to, you have to kind of be lucky. That you don't get pushed into the lag line by Vasa. We uh, start off with one range attack, two run movements. Obviously, we vengeance from high HP. No Tebow runs rely heavily on vengeance when it comes to Vasa, so it's important to know that you use your bruise at the moment your overload ticks up. 
So every 15 seconds basically is an opportunity. This is something you're going to have to get used to. It's a huge difference. It, yeah, it makes a huge difference. It's not a small deal. It's actually very important. You keep your stats at as high as possible to let your blowpipe do as much damage as possible. Saves a ton of time and uh, makes a hor turns a horrible Vasa into an actually pretty simple one. In this case, this particular fight was really good. You're not going to get as, as Rambo of a Rapier as I have been getting in this fight. You're going to find the fossas take about four to seven crystals and i just crossed that lag line i noticed it and marked it um again but okay because runelight sometimes ignores what you did so uh, i have to mark it again but that lag line is pretty horrible so it's useful to mark that and just remind yourself uh oh i'm going to lag there so you don't get caught in a surprise I'm still doing as much DPS as I can. Venging once or twice is... You can venge twice every rotations for sure. You're going to have to heal a bit more, of course. The the important one is obviously the special. The second venge I, I do always. The third venge I only do... I only do the third venge when I know for sure that I will be able to do three crystal. And I was sure this time because just of how hard I hit the crystals... And so I've done two Venges here, the third Venges I do right now. And I am at full HP or quasi full HP. Never go over 99 by the way, it's not worth it. You can get trampled and combo killed, it, the extra bit of damage isn't worth it. Go to like 85 to 99, uh, but not over. Uh, I almost killed it actually here, which is which would be a great Vasa, but well, it still is, but uh, yeah, just managed to do a ton of DPS, not enough to avoid this crystal. But this is going to be the last one. And you can see how important Vengeance is. Uh, because even with max stats right now, that Vasa was almost dead right there. And look at how long it still takes me to kill the boss. Uh, to the point where it gets really close, as you can see. I even purposefully Vengeance myself there. Or at least purposely take damage there to hit Frog the Vengeance. And you can see that, that Vengeance made the difference. If I didn't do that, that would be another crystal. So... Yeah, Vasa is very consistent and quite easy if you learn it correctly. And it's going to take a while to learn this. All of the little clicks are important. But um, as long as you remind yourself to uh, keep brewing at every overload tick, every 15 seconds, keep that overload timer in, uh, in the corner of your eye. And you can both do top DPS plus Vengeance from high, and you will have fast Vasas every single time, even if your Rapier sometimes doesn't want to work with you. Uh, especially if you have Dragon Claws. If you don't have Claws, it works as well, but you're not going to have as many uh, three crystal Vasa cycles. Sometimes you will, but most of the time will be two crystal, but that's just fine. It's still uh, That just means a little bit more Vengeance. Now, when we run, run past the uh, Scav, Prey, Melee... Change your quick prayers to magic and rigor and uh, wear yourself and then try and lure the red one to the corner I just lured him in. Uh, in this case, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the at the mystic and he won't uh, venom himself, said, or I won't venom him. It's RNG. Generally, he does get venom, so I killed him myself, but when this is a pretty substantial time save. When you see a venom splat on your mystic and you have enough food, if you're low on food, you don't want to do that. You just want to kill it, but you just want to let it live, let it chase you a bit and get it stuck uh, while, you kill the, while you lure the other two. And if you're in a situation like I am right now, I do the same thing with the green mystic. I ignored it now, even though it's almost dead. And I wasn't sure if I did venom it, but it doesn't matter because they're, you know, he stops attacking me once I focus the other one. And as you saw, he venomed and died. So the venom killed him. So um, save some time that way. Here I wait two ticks for uh, before I enter. When once the purple thing in front of that door disappears you wait two ticks and then you can immediately run through without having to deal with that little gate it's uh, kind of the same system of uh, Vespula works because the, the room only loads every four ticks so you want to uh, you want to move in right after it was supposed to load um, there's a little trick that you can use to speed things up slightly then um, Mutadal is of course a big RNG party this one goes really well I take uh, very little damage the tree goes down quickly I managed to. I'll. Uh, I want to mention. So the blowpipe method is just blowpipe hit, then one brew, then one blowpipe hit, and then chop again. You can do that 
and uh, have enough time to not miss any chop uh, tree chops but it does um, it doesn't heal you like the sang staff does but I prefer it because I can bring an extra brew without the sang staff then just do the walk under method the big muted owl is um, not hard per se except when he does what he's doing right now he doesn't want to move to the safe spot and because I don't have a twisted bow you're going to be dragged into it pretty quickly so what I do is I try and walk this guy even though it wastes run energy I think it's much better than just standing still you never know when he's gonna run into you and chomp you so yeah just one thing I would want to point out if you do the wooks walk method try and try and not tick eat anything tick eating is a bit harder it works no problem but it's a little harder and if you mess up you can die so just keep high HP when you when you're running like a, like an idiot but then you finally get him into the safe spot and everything should be fine and you can tick eat if you want I didn't have to because I have enough food and I prefer healing every overload tick as always just healing uh, at the overload tick don't uh, do this when you're uh, when you're risking if you're below 40 HP you should heal uh, you should try and tick eat his attack instead of just waiting for the overload to tick up now when I'm running to the chest, uh, pretty important to already figure out your inventory before you even reach it. it saves quite a bit of time actually. Um, you can see how I'm dragging all over my inventory. The reason is so I can quickly bank all the stuff I don't need. As you can see I just quick banking and my inventory is looking good. I wear my Warhammer, I fill my remaining stamina potion and quickly get out my mage gear my uh, lance. I don't bring the scythe even though it's faster to use 7 to 3 um, on Ulm. I prefer to bring an extra brew. So it's kind of safety versus speed choice that you make. Um, like in this Ulm I could have done 7 to 3 but uh, you're never sure. For all you know you're gonna have a difficult one and 6 brews and 3 restores is a nice is a nice uh, a nice balance I think very rarely do you have a problem with your supplies now when it comes to Ulm exact same as regular so I'm assuming if you're watching this you know what to do um, you shouldn't be doing CM if you don't know how to solo Ulm uh, one just a little bit of extra information on the differences um, 4 to 0 is more more of an annoyance because you seem to miss your magic hits a bit more and he hits very hard, surprisingly hard actually. His head face hits uh, like over 50, if I recall correctly. His first face he hits 39 max, I'm not sure. Maybe then the second 40, third 41 could be different numbers, but it's around those numbers. So if you're under 40 HP, you would definitely want to tick it. But you shouldn't, you try to not be under 40 HP. The overload ticking up, the timer, again, important. Important throughout the entirety of CM. Your stats are... A lot more influential on your eventual time and execution than in regular COX. On CM your stats really have to be on max just because of how defensive all of these things are and yeah healing above 70 HP uh, using your overload timer as a indicator on when to heal is a good strategy. Tick eating, redemptioning attacks is a good strategy in regular chambers but the payoff in CM is very low it's rarely that you're going to be able to redemption anything and the tick eating can be done here and there but the amount of uh, HP you save after, from tick eating is not really worth the risk I would say especially if you bring enough brews in so yeah keep your HP high don't really care uh, you shouldn't care too much about your sang healing of you and it's being kind of a waste you know imagine you're Maging the mage hand at half HP and you are already 99. You're kind of wasting sang heals, but it's worth it's worth not taking that the 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 risk of getting attacked twice in a row after you mess up on something happens sometimes, and you want to be safe for that because Ulm will hit 30s on you pretty consistently. So it's a it's a risk you don't want to take. Just Heal to above 70 using your overload timer to continue being on high stats and you won't get caught off guard. If he does go Rambo on you, you can always opt to tick eat. 
you, during the melee. Um, run energy, I would say you only need like five doses, ideally. Sometimes if you don't hit any, don't have any specs, you might need six or seven. But yeah, five doses is some is the amount you want to at least uh, go into all with. Four doses is fine if you're uh, if you're good at saving run energy, but it's there are moments where four doses just will not be enough and you will die on head face. So try and bring at least five in. But with three staminas from the regular uh, from the start of the raid, you should have enough. Here in this um, in third phase, I do four to zero. You don't have to do four to zero. Uh, I would bring an extra brew in just to be sure if you don't. But in this case, I've I've been pretty unlucky with my DPS, but I've been lucky with his DPS, so I still have a lot of food. So I didn't really need to four to zero, but I like uh, I like the method. And yeah, even though I mess it up quite a bit here, and this is an, a, a good example of why you want to stay at like 70 HP. Even during 4 to 0, don't go below 70 because if you mess up, and I will mess up somewhere in the middle, right here it's fine. Um, I take one orb and one magic attack, but the next time I mess up, I will take two attacks in a row, which uh, I think I was at KO pot potential, but yeah, it just goes to show how how much he can do in a very short amount of time. And also try and not kill the mage hand first like I did. Uh, hard to perfect, of course, because you don't know how much you're going to hit. And I happen to hit pretty hard near the end and kill the mage hand. Um, it's a small risk, but if he has healing hand as a special, there's a 1 in 12 chance he does that. When you start attacking the, the melee hand, you might reset the mage. Not the worst thing ever. You should have enough supplies to kill the mage hand again, but just a little bit of advice, try and kill the melee hand first. I think right here I mess up, yeah. So you can see I'm still getting attacked. I think I fixed it. So yeah, small risk I took there, but the melee hand went down. Um, four to one ranging, nothing to be said about it, it's the uh, same method as was regular, except that Ulm hits like a truck. So you want to take heat if you're below 50 or even below 55 or something like that. You want to take heat quite a lot. Um, I try to watch my overload timer, but I find that it's it's hard. He puts you at, tick, uh, at KO potential quite a lot. So tick eating is, is a skill you kind of need for this. Not necessarily, but you know, you want to do constant DPS, you're going to have to take it. And watching the overload timer while all of this is going down can be a little bit challenging. But method is the same as with, with regular chambers. And so you can see I'm finishing the head here. I uh, stopped the speed up and um, I think I'm going to clock in at about 47 minutes. Not a bad time. Um, actually quite a good time. Average is going to be around 50, 51 minutes. And if you mess up and die, you're, you'll be a little slower. But this is um, not the worst. Pretty efficient. Somewhat efficient, let's say, for no Tebow. Thanks for watching.